the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will do it again. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will do it for a third time. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to thank God for that song at the door. If there is anything that really burns in our hearts as Seventh-day Adventists, is the desire to see Jesus come the second time. Amen. It is greater than any other feeling. We don't look forward to our own weddings. We don't look forward to having children. We don't look forward to graduating. We don't look forward to completing a house. We don't look forward to finishing a church. Our greatest desire is the second coming of Jesus. And I realize not everybody said amen. I assume the others have other desires. But our greatest desire is to see Jesus come the second time. Amen. And still there are a few others who say nothing because their conversion is a slow process. But I will say that our greatest desire is to see Jesus come the second time. Amen. It's getting better here now. Thank you so much, Elder Witty the church leadership for allowing me to come here. You don't have to invite me. You are too big a church. You have too many people with means, ability, and you could as well do this without inviting me. So I take it as an honor from the Lord through you that I can come to serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Unfortunately, I don't carry big sermons with a big theology, something you can go home feeling like you learned anything. I'll just tell you small stuff, then I get out of here. Sometimes you may almost feel like it was a waste inviting me, but no problem. Hallelujah. So I'll, I'll tell you something small, then I'll get out of here. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, bless your word. And I pray that it will be clear that it will be understood, and that we will respond to this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message I would like to share with you from the Lord today is, give from what you have. That's all I came to tell you. Give from what you have. If you are looking forward to me saying anything different, I'm sorry, because I've finished what I wanted to say. Give from what you have. Anything else I will say after this is just emphasizing that point, that give from what you have. Brothers and sisters, don't steal in order to give. Don't borrow in order to give. The message from the Lord to you and me today is give from what? I can't hear you. Give from what? From what you have. Listen, friends. Giving is as old as worship. And that one looks simple, but it's a big fat point. That giving is as old as what? Worship. As long as worship has existed, giving has existed. Even if you don't understand, you're supposed to be nodding your head so that you look like you understand. Are we together? That as long as worship has existed, giving has also done what? Existed. Worship was never past tense and is never present tense and will never future tense be complete without giving. Say amen, if, even if you never give anything. Amen? amen? That worship has never been complete in the past without what? Giving. giving. And worship will not be complete today unless we do what? Giving. We give. And worship will not have taken place in future unless in that future, what do we do? Giving. We give. When we worship a giving God, we do so by giving. Be ye holy because your heavenly Father is what? Holy. Is holy. 
and the same father that we worship is a God that can be defined as a giving God. I will repeat again until you behave like you have understood. The same God we worship is a God that can be described as a giving God. Amen. I said he is a giving God. Amen. I know your amen is not loud enough because you don't know what he gives. Are we together? You're asking yourself, what did he give me? But I'm here to tell you that the God we came to worship today in this place is a what kind of God? A giving God. We give our lives to God because he gave his life for us. The Bible says, for God so did what? Loved the world. That what did he do out of love? He gave. And so when you worship a giving God, then your worship must include some giving. Hallelujah. Give your lives as a living what? Sacrifice. There must be something to be given. You see, friends, I get disappointed as pastor because when I sit around the church, apart from worshiping, I observe the behavior of worshipers. There are people, the box is put there for them to give an offering. They don't rise to give anything. No problem. They need forgiveness of sin for giving nothing. And then when the sermon ends and the preacher says, who gives their life to Jesus? They don't move. They neither give money nor give their own lives. Yet they came to worship a giving God. What a shame. What a shame. Offering nothing. Tithe nothing. Singing, they sing at low tone with a poor voice or they just stand in anger and look at the front. <laughs> they don't even give their voice. And then when the sermon ends at the climax of the message, they are invited. Anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus and while everyone is standing there seated, they have zipped their passes, their bags are already there just waiting for closing prayer to get out of here. They gave nothing during the worship. And yet they came to worship a giving God. Think about it. We give because we worship a giving God. We give our lives because he gave his life for us. We give because he gave and gives food. The food you ate today and ate yesterday and look forward to eat tomorrow is the food that God has provided. He gives food. He gives life. And what else does he give? He gives clothes. He gives shoes. The Bible says that when the Israelites were in the wilderness heading to the promised land, their shoes did not wear out because God ensured the shoes does not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out because God ensured that their clothes don't wear out. Why? Because God is concerned about your shoes and your clothes. And when they were hungry and needed food, he provided manna. And when they were thirsty, he provided water from a rock. And when they murmured that they wanted meat, he provided meat because God is a giving God. Amen. I said God is a giving God. Amen. I said God is a giving God. Amen. And how do we worship a giving God? How do we worship a giving God? By giving. There is no way you can appear before a giving God and just walk away without giving. That means you never appeared. That's why Moses told the Israelites, no one is to appear before the Lord empty-handed. That can cost you a life. You can't be uploading bundles the whole week and you are posting all nonsense about politics, about gender issues, gender violence, 
Somebody kills another one, you are the chief discussant on social media. Chief discussant. You give all opinions on social media. But when you come to God's church, you cannot even give your time. You are now looking at the clock and wondering how long will this preacher take. You can't give time, you can't give tithe, you can't give offering, you can't give your life. Yet God has given you enough bundles that you are spewing hate on social media. You are posting nonsense on social media. Things that even people wonder if you are of faith. And because you are embarrassed, you change your name to a Russian name. <laughs> but we know you. We give because he sustains us. We give not to buy prosperity from him. Listen, friends, as Seventh-day Adventists, we don't give offering and tithe because we want to get jobs on Monday or because we want to be blessed. We give because he gave. Our giving is an act of appreciation. And his blessing us is by his will and sovereign choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm saying, let me repeat again. When God blesses you, it's not because you triggered the blessing by what you did, but because he has chosen to bless you. And that's why God has been blessing all of us, even when we don't deserve. If we are together, say amen. amen. We don't deserve and we are blessed. That already tells you that the blessing is not triggered by what you do. You have been sustained many days without offering a single prayer. Too busy. You doze off and sleep without saying any prayer and you wake up okay. Do you think your prayers are the ones which sustain you? Oh, I'm sustained by prayer. Poor thinking. It is God's grace that sustains us. I will repeat it because old Christians normally say amen at this point. The moment they hear grace, their hearts are moved. Why are their hearts moved? Because they understand the amazing grace of God. I'm saying, friends, that it is the grace of God that sustains us. Amen. I'm saying that it's the grace of God that sustains us. Amen. And so we don't give to buy prosperity, never. You can never give enough offering to create a job next week. You can never give enough offering to get healing. You can never give enough offering to cause God to bless you. He blesses you because he has willed. And we don't give to impress God. There is a time God realized that people are giving to impress him. And he came and told David, listen, brother David, uh, I'm not interested in your bulls and goats. And in case I was hungry, if I ever get hungry, you are not even in the miscellaneous list of people I will consult. You are not even in the miscellaneous list of people I will ask whether I'm hungry. And so, when you give offering, when you are slaughtering goats and bulls, don't leave the place Feeling like you did God a favor. You did me no favor. And he tells David, listen, all the cattle on the a thousand hills are mine. How many hills do you have? And so I'm not good. And so friends, we cannot leave this place just because you gave a check to the church feeling like now the church owes you leadership the following year. We owe you nothing. We have never owed you anything before you gave and after you gave. We don't even owe you an appreciation. Why are you giving us? We also gave, came to give. We owe you nothing and don't look at us as if we owe you anything. Don't request for special parking and don't request for anything special. Just behave normal. The one you gave is not moved by silver and gold. Amen. And listen, friends, we don't give to enrich God because God says the whole world is mine. 
And so, friends, why do we give? We give as an act of worship that acknowledges God. What do Christians say? We give as an act of worship that acknowledges God. What does Christians say? If worship ends before you give, you didn't worship. I'm going to repeat this sentence so many times until you get sick about it. Because this one you must get. If worship ends before you give, what has happened? You didn't worship. If worship ends before you give, what happens? I can't hear you, friends. If worship ends before you give, what has happened? You didn't worship. If worship ends before you give, what has happened? I can't hear you. If worship ends before you give, what happened, friends? You didn't worship. How do you come before a giving God with nothing? The whole week blessed, the whole week favored, the whole week sustained, and before God empty-handed. How stingy can you get? Remind us of dogs that you give a bone, and then it starts biting the bone, then you go for the dog, and it turns against you. And so God has given us bones the whole week. And Sabbath comes, he wants a piece of the bone, and here we are angry people. You're always preaching about giving. All they want is money, money, money. That's how we grow. Are we together? There is even a new cheap theology by people with very little knowledge. I've seen it on social media, and I know it excites some of you. What is the cheap theology? Oh, we are not supposed to be giving tithe and offering. I've seen it on social media. Somebody is planning to raise their hand and say, I have a question. Are we supposed to give? Oh, you know, long ago, even people never used to give shekels which was a denomination being used in the synagogue and blah, blah. And even people who don't read the lesson that we give every week are reading that rubbish. Why are we more interested in what people who oppose the church are saying more than what the word of God says? What's wrong with us? Are we really okay? If you have such a, an appetite, check yourself in a mentor unit. They may discover something and you may get a tablet that will help you in, on your way to heaven. <laughs> that you are only moved by things that are controversial. Somebody comes and says, I don't think we are supposed to be giving tithe and offering. And say, uh-huh. Then the person says, Ellen G. White said, and you take a book ready to write notes. Are you okay? The message today, friends, is give from what you have. This is God's command through Moses that, play, that the place of worship that he wanted the Israelites to put up was to be done by people's contributions. People are to give from what they have. And this becomes the principle of all giving in scripture. All giving in worship must be based on giving from what you have. Everyone has something and it is not the same amount with everyone. When you read Exodus 35 verse 5 onwards, Exodus 35 verse 5 onwards, the Bible says, this is what Moses said to the whole community. This is what Moses said to the whole community. Moses said to the whole community of Israel, from what you have, verse 5, Exodus 35, verse 5, from what you do what you have, give what you have, from what you have, take an offering for who? For the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and what? Bronze. And if you think that's where he ends, the list continues in verse 6. 
If you don't have gold, if you don't have silver, if you don't have bronze, you may have the blue, you may have the purple, you may have the scarlet yarn, you may have the fine linen, or you could have goat hair. But in case you don't have any of that, verse 7, you may have ram skin dyed red and another type of durable leather. And if you don't have that, you may have acacia wood. The message today is give what you have. In verse 8, if you don't have all the above, you can give olive oil for the light. You can even give spices because surely you can afford spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. And in case you don't have all that, verse 9, you can give awning stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod breastplate of the priest. The message today is give. From what you have. Others have gold. Others have silver. And others have bronze. But you give what you have. Give what you have. Don't feel like I should have given gold and all I have is silver. Therefore, I cannot give silver. Give what you have. God gave you what you have. Give from what you have. God knows what you have. Give from what you have. If we are together, say amen. amen. What is the message today? Don't give what people think you have. I'm saying, don't give what people think you have. There is what people think you have because you ironed your clothes so straight, they put you in a certain bracket. Or maybe you hold a very big title, but what they don't know is that you are teaching children in your village. All the orphans in the village are under your care. And so while you are managing director, your net income has no reflection of your managingness or directorness. Give from what? Or maybe in the past out of foolishness that was not blessed by the Lord, you took loans more than you can survive on. And so when end months come, it has no difference whatsoever. End month, mid month, beginning of the month is the same. But the Lord has been very kind to you. Whatever he gives you, give from what? I can't hear you. Give from what? You have. Don't wait to finish the loans because they will not end. With your appetite for life, the moment you qualify for another one, you are going to take another loan. The way you look like. You are going to top up and squander it in one and a half months and look the same again for another three years. Are we together? Looking sad, miserable, blaming the government. Are we together? And saying even the BBI is not very clear on the economy. Can they put a statement there? No. Give what? Hey, hallelujah. Give what? <laughs> You know, one day, and I'm just emphasizing the point that give what you have. Why am I emphasizing this, Elder Witch? Is because the number of people who give in the SDA church are very few. We are not even talking about the faithfulness of those who give. The number of people who give in this church, who actually rise up to put something in the box, are very few. And one of the reasons is people feel like what they have is too little. But there are a few who feel like what they have is too much and the church may not handle if I gave them. One or two people, and at least one of them made it, made it for worship today. They feel like what they have is too much if they gave this church Everyone will start coming to my house asking me to fundraise, to be the chief guest of fundraising. But the principle of the Bible is that you only give what? 
I can't hear you. You only give what? Yeah. One day Moses was taking care of sheep. And then a bush started burning, but it was not getting consumed. When he got there, God spoke to Moses and told him, Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And I have come to send you today to go to Pharaoh. And I want you, when you get there, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses started complaining, oh, how can I go? I'm a Samara. I'm not able to do anything. And God told him, what do you have? Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And Moses replied, I have a staff. I have a stick. Listen, friends. Moses thought he had nothing. Moses thought that a stick was too little and negligible to mention to the Lord that this is what I have. And there is somebody who has been carrying a hundred shillings, two hundred shillings, a thousand shillings, 50 shillings and 20 shillings to church, but they feel that it is too little if it is given to God. And they have pocketed it and they are going back home with the money that should have been given to the Lord because according to them, it is too little to give to the Lord. God asked Moses, what do you have? And when Moses said, I have a stick that seems useless, a stick that doesn't seem to be much, God told him that that is the stick I want to use. And God demonstrated to Moses that what you have becomes much more if you give it to me. And God tells Moses, throw down your stick and when he throws down, what does it become? And after it becomes a snake, God tells Moses, pick it by the tail. And when he picks it up, it becomes what? It becomes a stick again, a staff. And God tells Moses through that message that what you have when you give to God does not remain the same. And that's why I came to tell you God's people in this church that give what? Give what you have. Look at how that church building looks like. It is starting to get embarrassing. No much activity seems to be going on there. And it is because there are people who believe they have very little income, they can't do anything to that church. And so they are looking for people who know the deputy president. I mean, you, when you want money, you look for the generous people. Are we together? And so they are looking for somebody who knows the deputy president. If he can pass by here, we have one major fundraising. We move it to another level. Yet the God of heaven has enough money here if only people will give what they have. When people give what they have, God will bless it and make it sufficient to complete that church. But because the majority are looking at the few who have big titles in society to give, the progress is very slow. The work going on there is the work of a few people. Even though out of politeness, elders come to thank all of us. We want to thank all of us so far where we have reached. And you know that appreciation should never be made to you. We want to thank all of us for the work that is going on. Which part of the cement is yours? Even the labor, just the labor, a day's labor for unskilled laborer who puts their effort there. Have you ever given anything? But you consume more airtime per week than what could be contributed to that time. Listen, friends, I didn't come to preach a long sermon or a complicated one. I just came to tell you one thing. Give what? 
I can't hear you give what? I can't hear you give what? Just give what you have. When it gets to the hands of the Lord, God performs a miracle. That simple silly stick was the one that turned all the water in River Nile into what? Blood. That same stick performed the ten plagues of Egypt. Every time God told Moses, wave it, and he waved it, something happened. And when they got to the Red Sea, the same stick split the water of the Red Sea. Because when you give God what you have, he can take you many places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give what? Give what? And so there are people who have not been serving God in this church. Even for elections this year, they said, allow me time next year. I will take up work next time. Shame on you. Give God what you have. Oh, next year I'm very busy. I'm trying to complete my education. Give me time. Why don't you give God the little time out of your education? He will bless your education and his work if you give him what you have. There are people who don't go for choir practice. Why? They don't go for choir practice because they are very busy. They can't create one hour for practice. Listen, friends. Give what? I can't hear you. Give what? Give what you have is the message. Don't look down on what you have. It is not useless before God. Give what you have. We fail God and his work when we give less or give nothing. We fail God and his work when we give less or give nothing. Yet he, all he has asked from us is that which we have. No one is expected to give more than they have. I will repeat. No one is expected to give more than they have. No, I will repeat again. No one is expected to give more than they have. I will repeat again. No one is expected to give more than they have. And I've seen people trying to frustrate others to give more than they have. They say, all men from Nyalenda, let's meet there. All men, all women, and they say, men, let us agree, all of us, 5,000. 5,000. Well, let's not let down our group. Who told you I have 5,000? <laughs> Just because you have 5,000, what makes you think everybody here has 5,000? Oh, when I look around here, I think all of us can afford 5,000. After doing all those types of fundraising, look at where we are. Because God loves not only a giver, the Bible says, let's go back to that text so that you, you see what I'm talking about. Exodus 35, verse 5. The Bible says, from what you have, take an offering for the Lord, everyone who is willing. I know it's very difficult for leaders who want to look good that their group has given a lot. Are we together? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. But listen, if the giving is not willing and you have to keep calling, form a WhatsApp group and keep reminding those who have not given, those who have not given, those who have not given, and you even create embarrassing situation by listing everyone who has given and what they have given so that those who have given less or those who have not given can feel bad. God says, I don't like that kind of money. And that's the kind of money when you give, simiti na anguka njiani na pasuka inamuagika. God didn't need it. The giving must be willing. It has never been amount of giving, but the willingness of the heart that gives. So you go around squeezing people, give, give. Our group is the last one in the whole church. Our group is looking bad. Please give. Please give. Oh, come meeting is coming. Give. Please give this side. Give. Until now, eh, every member has a goal of 10,000. Yeah. 
with all my loans, Faulu loan, Barclays Bank loan, the Sako loan, and the money I owe my uncle who is in America, and hey, where does 10,000 come from? Even in a whole year, I will not have collected 10,000. So the only way to make sure you are not troubled is you disappear from this church. You start attending another church, Kisumu Laos. And when people meet you in town, you say, I've been away. <laughs> I've been away. I will come. I've been away. Why? Because somebody has abused the process of giving. The Bible says, give what you have. So we have people who are frustrated. All children, 100 shillings. Where the child comes from, they can't even eat the whole family, 100 shillings. The whole family. Omena and Ugali. Total for the family, 75 shillings. But somebody in church is demanding 100 shillings. God loves a cheerful giver. And God tells Moses, only collect an offering from whoever is willing. If the person is not willing, leave that money alone. I want to demonstrate to that person that my work can go on without them. Look at how far the church has gone without the contribution of some of you. Do you realize how useless you can be? <laughs> and now God says, to improve your usefulness, give what you have. I can't hear you. Give what you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah again. Amen. Give what you have. you have. And so... Those of you who are forming WhatsApp groups for funerals, weddings, and what have you, trying to embarrass all of us, you are trying to go to school, you are contributing to this. Listen, it is only blessed if we are willing. And WhatsApp realizing that you are uncontrollable, incorrigible, with poor manners, forming groups every day, they, they put in a new application in WhatsApp where you can't add me unless I say so. And I challenge any of you to add me to a group. You will discover you can't. <laughs> you can't. You won't. I mean, how? How will you add me? WhatsApp will tell you, send a request. Those days you wake up in the morning, you are in a prayer group. You don't know any member. You wake up again, you are in a Bible study group. You don't know any member. And the things they are discussing don't make sense. You go to work, you come out, 500 messages. You say, hey, what's happening around here? And uncivilized behavior left, right, and center. And the people who sit at WhatsApp headquarters discovered that this foolishness needs an app to control it. Yes. And today we praise God that that can no longer happen without consent. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Manners must be learned. We must learn manners. No one is expected to give more than they have. God doesn't allow that. Neither does he bless that kind of giving. So you are only supposed to give what? You have. Uh, there's too much information here. Let me just give one more example, then I get out of here. Because it's getting hot. John chapter 6. What did I say? John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, Jesus has been preaching the whole day. How long has Jesus been preaching? The whole, the whole day. And when late afternoon comes, he realizes that the congregation has not eaten any food since morning. And so Jesus says to the disciples, my guys, let's get them lunch. <laughs> and the disciples tell Jesus, you are not serious. Okay, let's, let's turn to that. That, that, that. John, 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 John. Okay. Verse 1 says, Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd, verse 2, of people followed him because they saw signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down with his disciples, and the Jewish past festival Passover was here. Verse 5. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, what did he say to Philip? Where shall we buy bread for who? For these people to eat. Verse 6. 
he asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind where the food was coming, going to come from. I mean, God knew where the food will come from. But he tells Philip, where do we get bread for these people? And verse 7, if we are in verse 7, say amen. amen. Verse 7, the Bible says, Philip answered him, it will take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Just a bite. He's telling Jesus, listen, if these people are just to bite the bread and go home, having just had a bite, we will need a salary of half a year. Verse 8. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. And in verse 9, what did he, if we are in verse 9, say amen. amen. He said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves. That, that's like the KDF. Are we together? You know KDF? Yes. Not Kenya Defense Forces. But, but the, the, the wheat flour product looks like Mandazi, KDF. Are we together? KDF. So those were just how many KDFs? Five KDFs. Five, five of them. Five small barley loaves and two small fish. Now, I don't know fish very well. But two small fish for a boy's lunch is what type of fish? Uh, Elder, I'm looking at you. You are the expert here now. What type of fish? A small boy's lunch. It can't be mbuta. Mbuta will be very big. Are we together? And it can't be omena. Omena will be very small. Are we together? So what, what is it, Elder? Eh? Oh, that one you are mentioning. Are we together? So there were only two of those. Uh, <laughs> if we are still together, say amen. amen. Andrew was not giving the lunch because he expected Jesus to feed people with it. He was using that lunch to dismiss Jesus. You know, he realized <laughs> we can't assist this man. He is asking for lunch to feed all these people. He said, okay, there is food. A small boy, he has five KDF and some two pieces of fish. And then he thought that God doesn't know how to deal with that kind of food. He told them, you tell the people to sit down, it's lunchtime. Ah! Sit down for a boy's lunch? Look, he says in verse 10, Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. And this is very polite. The Bible says, Jesus asked them to sit down because there was plenty of what? I mean, as leaders, we must be kind enough to ask people to sit where it is suitable. You can't ask people to sit down. You can't have a big meeting. You don't even bring tents for people. Are you okay? You plan a whole big meeting Thousands of people, and you want people to sit in the sunlight, then you make a small shade for yourselves at the front. And then you stand there and say, Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath that side! Happy Sabbath the other side! Are you okay? <laughs> and then you preach a long sermon, and people have been standing since nine. They are just looking at you. I think we need to learn from Jesus. Honestly, there is some mental sickness that we suffer from. Number one, Jesus was concerned whether people have eaten. Do we as leaders get concerned whether our congregation has eaten? The place is now too hot. If I continue preaching, I no longer have the spirit of Jesus. I mean, there is no amount of preaching you keep doing and everybody is fanning themselves. At some point, you must be sensitive. And the Bible says, when Jesus said, have the people sit down, the writer of the book says, there was plenty of what? Grass. Of grass. But you go invite everybody. Let us all meet at Kenyatta grounds. Let us all meet at Kenyatta grounds. Then you provide seats for the choir, some dignitaries who are only dignitaries, not before God, but before you. And then the rest of the people you consider wicked are in the sun. Brethren, we must plan better. 
All of us don't meet, need to meet at one place. Let me tell you, worship will still take place if we meet in our various churches. After all, when we gather in big groups, what do we benefit? Apart from catching up, taking pictures, and just wondering at the crowd. Now, I just came to tell you what Jesus said. Are we together, friends? The food available for that day compared to the people who are hungry was not even worth presenting as a solution. But that is all that they had. And the principle of heaven is give what you have. Give what you have. And when it was given to God, was it enough or it was not enough? I can't hear you. Was it enough or it was not enough? I can't hear you. Was it enough or it was not enough? Ah, uh, you failed. It was not enough. It was more than It was more than enough because the Bible says at the end of eating there was a lot of baskets of untouched food. And that means that Jesus was concerned about the environment. But you find the disciples of Jesus they drink water from a bottle. After drinking water from the bottle, they throw it there. And they are wondering whether they have the spirit of Jesus. It is Jesus who said, collect what remains. Jesus cares about the environment. Jesus cares about wastage. And he does not want wastage. If we are together, say amen. Amen. The message I came to share with you, friends, is give what? Yeah. Give what? Yeah. And so I will not say all these other things I plan to tell you today. Allow me just to say this, friends, that we need to make a permanent commitment of returning time. We cannot continue giving erratic tithe return. If we are together, say amen. amen. We have to make a permanent commitment of returning time. We need to make a permanent commitment of how much significant offerings we will give to the Lord. Everyone must give what they have, but ask yourself, from what I have, what offering can I give God? And I want to tell you how these things are used. Tithe, tithe, when it is collected in this church, not a single cent remains in this church. As it is given, it goes to the conference from where it is budgeted for the preaching of the gospel. Tithe is used for the spread of the gospel by paying pastors such as myself. The more you give does not mean the more I earn. The more you give, the more pastors are employed. My salary many times will remain the same even when your giving goes high. But when your giving goes low, my salary will go where? It will go low because there is nothing to give. But when you give more, my salary will not increase. But more workers will be hired to spread the gospel. Tithe cannot be used for any other purpose. You cannot use tithe to help the poor along the road. No! Tithe must come as it is, 10% of your income. And it goes to spread the gospel. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Offering, offering comes in two. Any offering you give to this church is split into 50%, 50%. The one half goes to the conference for more work of the Lord and the other half remains in this church to progress this church. Did you hear what I say? 50% of any offering you give remains where? Where does it remain? Where does it remain? So if you give 100 shillings, what will remain here? 50 more. So as you give, have that in mind. Have that in mind. Because in our giving, we must consider God's work at the local church and God's work at the global level. And that's why our giving is always distributed between the work of the local church and the work of God at the global level. If we are together, say amen. amen. And therefore, 
any giver must give tithe and I can't hear you must give tithe and tithe and offering. If you give tithe without giving offering, you are failed. If you give offering without giving tithe, you are failed. We are supposed to give tithe and what? Offering. And so we need to make a permanent commitment of how much significant offerings we will give. And number three, friends, we need to accept this church building project as a personal project. I've just run out of time, but later this afternoon, I'm going to demonstrate from scripture that we need to take such work personally. And so sit at your house and say, I will give time for God's work out there. I will give offering for God's work at my church and out there. But what about this church? I need to give a building offering. Every Sabbath continuously, I must give. And when you do that, God will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so how many three things have I told about that we need to give? How many things? Three. Number one? Tithe. Number two, Offering. offerings. Number three, building offering. And the last one I want to talk about is that let us remember to give ourselves to the Lord. Let us remember to give ourselves to the Lord. He gave himself for us. We must therefore give ourselves to him. And so today, friends, I want us to make that commitment. We are going to sing a song, and as we sing this song, I want you to make a commitment of what you will, that you will always give tithe under all circumstances. That you will always give offering, that whenever you come to worship, you will not come empty-handed. And that you will remember God's work that needs to complete that church. And finally, and not the least, you will remember that you need to give your life to God. I want you to make that commitment. If you need to write somewhere, write it. After you have done your commitment, anyone who has done a commitment, I will ask them to stand and move forward. Anyone who has made a commitment. If you have not made a commitment and you are just here so that the service ends, you rush where you are rushing, remain seated. God is gracious. He will still bless you in his own way. Are we together? But I'm talking of those who are making commitment. And they are saying, God, a faithful tithe you will get from me. God, a faithful offering you will get from me. God, your church, I will give what I have for that church. I promise. And I will give myself. I will ask that as we sing this song, after you have made the commitment, you stand and move forward. And when we finish, I'm going to offer a prayer of commitment and a prayer of blessing. Amen? amen. Okay, the amens are fewer. Amen? amen. SDA hymnal number 281. 281. I gave my life for thee. My precious blood I shed That thou might ransom be And quickened from the dead I gave, I gave my life for what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My father's house of life. My glory circled throne I live for athlina For 
wandering sad and long I left I left it all for thee hast thou left all for me I left I left it all for thee. Has thou left all for me? The last stanza. I suffered much for thee. More than thy time. Can tell of the dress agony to rescue thee from hell. I've borne, I've borne it all for. What hast thou born for me? I've born, I've born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be, and queen. Everything, even the light that we have comes from you. Even the income to jump on a matatu comes from you. Even the money to replace stolen phones comes from you. Even the airtime that we use on social media and calling around comes from you. And today we acknowledge that there is no way we can come before you with nothing. Because all you want is not an amount, but we give that which you have given us. Look at your children, Father. They have made a commitment today, a commitment before God. A commitment that what you have given them, they will give to you the portion that they have made up their mind about. They will give their faithful tithe. They will give an offering. They will dedicate money for the building of the church. And above all else, they will give themselves to you. Dear Heavenly Father, accept the commitment. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that prove to the whole world that even if a few give, you can complete this church and you can complete your work around the world without the giving of anyone who must be pressurized to give. Prove, Father, that you can bless little and make it much in your hand. And so, Father, we bring the little we have. We bring our little faith. We bring all that you have given us, and we say, bless, bless, bless. So into your hands, Father, I commit to all of your children who came for worship. Those who understood the sermon, bless them. Those who didn't understand, make it clear, Father. Those who made a commitment, bless them. Those who didn't make a commitment, pursue them and convince them. And that when we leave the place of worship, may we leave a blessed people. Because worship is not complete until we...
this is our prayer. 